But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. But he that is spiritual judgeth all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. For who hath known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. During the 4th century, Rome was considered by most people to be the center of the Christian world. Every year on December 25th, the day now recognized as Christmas, the Romans held a huge birthday celebration. Roman calendars designated that day as the most important birthday of the year. Rome, the center of 4th century Christianity, December 25th. Would you care to guess whose birthday was celebrated? No, it was not celebrated as the birthday of Jesus Christ, but rather the birthday of the pagan sun god, Sol Invictus, the invincible sun. The birthday of all the other pagan gods was celebrated with 24 chariot races in the Roman circus. The birthday of Sol Invictus, December 25th, was celebrated with 30 races. 150,000 people would pack the racetrack for a day of festivity. Today, without even the slightest justification, December 25th is recognized as the birthday of Jesus. Less than 200 years ago, those living in what is now recognized as the United States would have had nothing to do with celebrations on that day. In fact, it was illegal. It was condemned by the Puritans, the Methodists, the Quakers, the Amish, the Presbyterian, and the Baptist. Only in 1856 was it made legal in Massachusetts. Today, the majority of Christian theologians and teachers would have us believe that Jesus really does not care that a known pagan birthday is celebrated as his own. They believe that paganism and Christianity can be combined and that the Creator will do nothing. Those living in Jerusalem shortly before the Babylonian captivity thought the same thing. Right there on the Temple Mount and even in the Temple itself, pagan ritual abounded and those folks thought that God did not care and that he would do nothing about it. While sending prophets to warn the religious leaders and the people that he would not accept that, they did not listen. God allowed that to go on for almost 200 years. That is, until one day his own people found themselves in captivity, many of them slaughtered as the Almighty removed his hand of protection. Almost 200 years ago, Christmas a known precept of pagan sun worship was made legal in America. It was proclaimed to be Christian in nature, and just as those living shortly before the Babylonian captivity, the majority of our religious leaders tell us that God does not care and that He will do nothing about it. What do you think? Earnestly contending for the faith once delivered to the saints, I'm Richard Reeves with Just the Fact. Did you know that Christmas was illegal in England and that it was outlawed in New England from 1649 to 1658? Isn't it just terrible that those mean people would not want anyone to celebrate our Savior's birth at the time of Christmas? Just who were these terrible, narrow-minded people that would not want their children to celebrate Christmas? The Puritans, the Methodists, the Quakers, the Amish, the Presbyterians, and the Baptist. No, those people were not terrible, just the opposite. Those folks did not want to dishonor our Savior by associating the birthday of pagan gods with His nativity. While there is no indication that Jesus was born on December 25th, there is overwhelming evidence that the sun gods of antiquity were honored at that time. Check it out for yourself. Look it up in an encyclopedia. Do a search, type in Christmas, and you will be plainly informed that no one knows the actual day of Jesus' birth. 
and that the date for Christmas coincides with pagan festivals at the time of the winter solstice, the time at which the pagan sun gods of antiquity were said to have been born. Why is it that many of the denominations that carefully guarded the truth now celebrate the well-known birthday of mythological gods? Over time, those denominations have compromised in a futile effort to harmonize the traditions of men with the truths of Scripture. Time is the ally of deceit. Earnestly contending for the faith, once delivered to the saints, I'm Richard Reed with Just the Facts. Constantine is recognized as the first Christian emperor. What most people are not aware of is that while professing Christianity, Constantine maintained his devotion to the sun god Sol Invictus. The all-inclusive title given to the sun gods by the Roman emperor Aurelian some 30 years earlier. Professing Christianity while practicing paganism, Constantine had the authority as a ruler of the empire to define a new Christianity. Not the faith once delivered to the saints, but a new version of Christianity lacking few aspects of pagan ritual. Examining the evidence, there is no question that the actions of Constantine have had a great deal to do with the fact that many of the precepts found in contemporary Christianity, the Christianity practiced by most today, are actually based in pagan sun worship. These precepts can be traced without a doubt to the sun god to which Constantine was committed, to Sol Invictus, the invincible sun. There is no doubt that Constantine considered himself a Christian, and by today's standards he would more than qualify. Within the writings of numerous historians we find attributed to Constantine beautiful prayers of honor and devotion to Christ. His Christianity was not, however, the Christianity described in the Bible. He divined his own version of Christianity, which other than sacrifice and the consultation of oracles, contained practically all the elements of pagan sun worship that he was familiar with. In the book of Matthew, Jesus warned that many people who call him Lord will not enter into the kingdom of heaven, only those that do the will of his Father which is in heaven. Is the Christianity you practice based on that described in the Bible? are the traditions of men that can be traced directly to the pagan sun worship practiced by Constantine. I encourage you to do a little research. You might be surprised by what you learn. Earnestly contending for the faith once delivered to the saints, I'm Richard Reeves with Just the Facts.